So we see that charges apply forces to each other. Well, if they apply forces to each other, that tends to cause them to move. When an object has a force applied on it while it moves, then work is being done and its energy is changing. So we'd like to have a way to describe the energy associated with electric charges and with these electric forces, and that's known as voltage. So here's the idea. Two charges that are of the same sign, both positive here, so they'll push each other apart given a chance. Well, pushing along a distance is work. Now this force is proportional to the charge. If the charges were larger, the force would be larger and more work would be done. We have a way of describing that. The work per charge is known as the voltage. The way we define that is energy per unit charge. The work that's done on a unit charge, well, our unit of energy or work is the joule. The unit of charge is the coulomb. So our unit of voltage is going to be the joule per coulomb. That's a special unit that we use a lot that has a special name. It's the volt. The symbol for volt is the uppercase V. One of the main ways that we use electric charges in our daily lives is in electric circuits. So let's understand a little bit about how those work. In class, you did an activity where you were given a light bulb, a wire, and a battery, and asked to make the circuit so that you could light up the bulb. One of the principles that you used when you successfully lit the light bulb was that the electric charges have to move in a circuit. They have to leave the battery, go through some conductors, and then return back to the battery. If you did this without including the light bulb in the circuit, you made what's known as a short circuit, and the wire or the battery would get rather hot. If you did it properly, then you would have one of the wires connected to one of the terminals of the battery that was connected to the side of the light bulb, and the other terminal of the battery would then directly touch the bottom of the light bulb. That way, the electric charges that were flowing from the battery would go through the filament of the light bulb, where they heated it up and made it glow. So what's happening in this situation is that electric particles, in this case electrons, are flowing through the conductors, flowing through the light bulb, they're meeting some resistance inside the light bulb, and that resistance makes them lose some of their energy, or it's basically like friction, rubbing two surfaces together. The electrons are rubbing past the material of the tungsten filament as they go by, and it gets hot, so hot that it glows. We call that movement of electric charges electric current. The current is defined as the amount of charge that passes through a point or through a conductor per unit time. So the unit for that has to be the unit of charge, which is the coulomb, divided by the unit of time, which is the second. The coulomb per second is a quantity that's very important in its own right. It has its own unit, which is known as the ampere. You've probably heard of that, sometimes shortened to amps. Charges don't flow through conductors unhindered all the time. Just like when you pull a box across a floor, there's usually some friction associated with it. The same kind of thing happens to charges moving through a conductor. They'll bump into the other things that are inside the conductor. That causes a loss of energy. It causes a transfer of energy to the conductor itself, which heats it up. That's how an electric light bulb works. The charges flowing through the filament rub against the material of the filament, heating it up and making it glow. We refer to this resistance as resistance. We measure it as the voltage that's required to maintain a given current through the conductor. We quantify this by Ohm's law, which says that the current through an object is equal to the voltage across it divided by its electrical resistance. The unit of electrical resistance is the volt per ampere, which is also known as the Ohm. It has this funny symbol for it. This is the Greek letter capital letter omega. The reason for that is omega sounds like ohm. The voltage is what causes the current. The current is the result of that, and the resistance reduces the effect of the voltage. The more the resistance, the less current there is for a given voltage. 
Let's see if we can use Ohm's law. Here we have a scenario where a one and a half volt battery powers a light bulb that has a resistance of nine ohms. So we're asked to find the current. So we're given V, that's 1.5 volts. We're given R, that's nine ohms. We want to find I. Ohm's law tells us I equals V over R. So we have to take our V, one and a half volts, divided by R, nine ohms. That ends up being one sixth of an ampere. Now you try it. Here, we're given that the voltage is 12 volts. We know the current now, that's 15 amperes, and you're supposed to find what the resistance is. We're also sometimes interested in finding how much energy is given up by a current as it goes through a resistor. For instance, we might want to know how much energy is associated with keeping a light bulb lit. In fact, that's usually what we want to know about. When we buy light bulbs, we buy them specified by the power that they draw. A 100 watt light bulb, a 25 watt light bulb, a 200 watt light bulb. Well, how do we find electric power? What we've talked about so far is voltage. That's the work done on the charges per unit of charge. So energy per charge. And we've talked about current, which is how many charges flow per unit time. And then when you multiply these two together, the voltage times the current, work per charge times charge per time, the charges cancel out and you have work per time. That's power. So if you want to know the power that's dissipated in a resistor, well, that's just the voltage across the resistor times the current through the resistor.